Ornitholestes was a lightly built bipedal carnivore. Its head was proportionally smaller than that of most other predatory dinosaurs, but the skull was heavily built, with a short snout and robust lower jaw. Its big eyes might have been specialized for nocturnal hunting. Paleontologists estimated that a 12 kg endothermic ornitholestes would have a daily dietary requirement of about 700 grams of flesh. It would have been fast, but probably not as fast as other similarly sized dinosaurs that had longer legs. Pelicanomimus is a special dinosaur as it is considered to be one of if not the earliest known ornithomimosaur. It also stands out from later forms because of the large number of teeth that are still present within its mouth, around 220 in total. Harpimimus is another primitive ornithomimosaur. It seems to display a change in dietary focus from meat to plants, something which is indicated in the upper jaw being toothless, while the only teeth remaining in the lower jaw being small and cylindrical. Garudamimus may have been an omnivore, it had relatively short legs and heavy feet, this has led to speculation that it would have actually been quite slow for an ornithomimosaur, although it could still probably outpace a human runner with ease. Dinaeurus is thought to have been omnivorous, its skull shape indicates a diet of plants, fish scales were found in association with one specimen and gastrolids were also present in the stomach region of the specimen. The large claws may have been used for digging and gathering plants. Though it was a bulky animal, its dorsal ribs were tall and relatively straight, indicating that the body was narrow. All the vertebrae were highly pneumatized by invading air sacs, except for the atlas bone and the hindmost tail vertebrae, and were thereby connected to the respiratory system. The back vertebrae were as pneumatized as those of sauropod dinosaurs, and had an extensive system of depressions. These adaptations may be correlated with gigantism, as they reduce weight. The habitat of Timimus consisted of polar forests with mild summers but cold and dark winters due to the closer proximity of the area to the South Pole during the early Cretaceous. It was thus presented as proof that the group was indeed present in the Southern Hemisphere and would even have originated there. Dromaceomimus may have been the fastest of ornithomimids, at least according to one analysis of this theropod's unusually long legs. It was also notable for its relatively large eyes, and correspondingly big brain, which matched up oddly with this dinosaur's weak, toothless jaws. Like other ornithomimid, Gallimimus would have been a fleet animal, using its speed to escape predators, its speed has been estimated at 50 km per hour. It may have had good vision and intelligence comparable to ratite birds. The highly mobile neck may have helped locate small prey on the ground, but it may also have been an opportunistic omnivore. The diet of ornithomimus is still debated. As theropods, ornithomimids might have been carnivorous but their body shape would also have been suited for a partly or largely herbivorous lifestyle. Its large eye sockets suggest a keen visual sense, and also suggest the possibility that they were nocturnal. Struthiomimus differed from close relatives only in subtle aspects of anatomy. The edge of the upper beak was concave in Struthiomimus, unlike Ornithomimus, which had straight beak edges. These dinosaurs really look like modern ostriches. It was one of the first theropods envisioned from the outset as having a horizontal posture, this newer view created an image much more reminiscent of modern flightless birds. Alvarez sauridae is a family of small, long-legged dinosaurs. Although originally thought to represent the earliest known flightless birds, a consensus of recent work suggests that they evolved from an early branch of Manoraptoron theropods. Alvarez saurids were highly specialized. They had tiny but stout forelimbs, with compact, bird-like hands. Their skeletons suggest that they had massive breast and arm muscles, possibly adapted for digging or tearing. They had long, tube-shaped snouts filled with tiny teeth. 
They may have been adapted to prey on colonial insects such as termites, like modern anteaters. Linhenicus is the first known Alvarez saurid to have only a single, second digit. However, it was shown by cladistic analysis to have been a basal form as is indicated by the fact that its enlarged digit is not as large or robust as with more advanced forms. Alberto Nicus is interpreted as having fed on wood nesting termites because the forelimbs appear to be specialized for digging, but are too short for burrowing. It is the earliest known North American Alvarez saurid. Shuvuuia was found surrounded by small, hollow, tube-like structures resembling the central vein of modern bird feathers. It is unique among non-avian theropods in the skull's ability to perform prokinesis, that is, it could flex its upper jaw independently of its brain case. It was a small and lightly built animal and at 60 cm in length it is one of the smallest known dinosaurs. Montanilus was likely very nimble and could run at high speeds, something that would have been useful in the open flood plains where it lived. Its large eyes might have allowed Mononicus to hunt by night, when it was cooler and there would have been fewer predators about. The description of Falcarius clarifies the early evolution of the Therizinosauria and their relationship with the larger group of theropod dinosaurs, because Falcarius is a transitional form between older theropods and the much-changed Therizinosauridae. Gianchongosaurus was a small, lightly built, bipedal, ground-dwelling herbivore. It is the only known Therizinosaur that possesses a tail with caudal centra that are oval in shape. The impressions of a series of wide and unbranched feathers were discovered with fossils. The paleoenvironment of the Yixian formation involved seasonal climate fluctuations, and was warm and humid, with dry seasons, in which the environment became more arid. The average yearly temperature during the time of Bapiosaurus was 10 degrees Celsius, it is actually cold for the Mesozoic era. Like other Therizinosaurs, Nemungosaurus was descended from meat-eating theropods, though the teeth in its lower jaw which have coarse serrations which indicate that it was plant-eaters, although it was a primitive representant of the group. Segnosaurus would have been robustly built, with the trunk of the body tilted upwards compared to other theropods. Their fingers were not particularly long, but bore large claws. The front part of their pelvis was enlarged and flared sideways to support a large belly. Erlikosaurus may have been more lightly built than close relative Segnosaurus. It was a ground-breaking discovery as it was the first Therizinosaurid skull known to science, showing a broad rounded bony beak useful for cropping off plants. Therizinosauridae was named after the large, claw-bearing ungual found on the manus of members in the group. This feature has led to little insight about the ecology of the family, and the purpose of the claw remains unknown, probably used as defense against predators. Therizinosaurus was the largest and its claws were specially long and probably reached one meter in length. The claws were relatively straight, only gradually tapering into a point, as well as extremely narrow and transversely flattened. A theory about the claws is that they were aids in reaching up into the tree canopy to pull down choice pieces of vegetation, in the same kind of way that a modern-day sloth will also use its long claws to reach its food. Relationships within the Therizinosauridae are difficult to determine, due to the paucity of remains known from Therizinosaurus itself. A fossil of Nothronicus was recovered from a marine deposit, this means that this individual Nothronicus had somehow been swept out to sea and finally come to rest on the bottom of what would then have been known as the Western Interior Seaway. It was bipedal and walked more upright than its carnivore ancestors. The current scientific consensus is that Therizinosaurids evolved from small, bird-like Maniraptorans, and thus they fall within the Coelurosaurian clade called Maniraptora, as well as the sister clade to Oviraptors. Most studies have concluded that within Maniraptora, Therizinosaurians were the first of five major groups to diverge.
The most significant, and highly unusual, characteristic of Incisivosaurus is its apparent adaptation to an herbivorous or omnivorous lifestyle. It was named for its prominent, rodent-like front teeth, which show wear patterns commonly found in plant-eating dinosaurs. Cadeteryx had uncinate processes on the ribs, bird-like teeth, a first toe which may or may not be partially reversed and overall body proportions that are comparable to those of modern flightless birds. Because Cadeteryx has clear and unambiguously penaceous feathers, like modern birds, and because several cladistic analyses have consistently recovered it as a non-avian, oviraptorid, dinosaur, it provided, at the time of its description, the clearest and most succinct evidence that birds evolved from dinosaurs. The presence of feathers in Avamimus is now widely accepted, but most paleontologists do not believe it could fly. Its legs were long with proportions that are close to cursorial birds and it seems to have had a large brain for its body size, which mean a greater level of base intelligence. Gigantoraptor was a very unique looking dinosaur when it was alive. It was not only fairly large, but it also had some distinguishing features. It had a beak like a bird and may have even had feathers, making it look more like a giant bird than a dinosaur. And its head may have been colored like that of a rooster, in brilliant shades of red and orange, making it an impressive sight indeed. It was probably an omnivorous dinosaur who lived off of plants' eggs, fruits and maybe even crustaceans. It was much larger, approximately three times as long and 85 times more massive than its relatives. The hand function of Kairos notes and found that its elongated second finger with its unusually straight claw may have been an adaptation to crevice probing. They suggested it may have fed on soft-bodied prey that could be impaled by the second claw, such as grubs, as well as unarmored amphibians and mammals. Anzu is known to have had a fairly large rounded crest on top of its skull, a feature that was likely for display purposes. One of the most interesting things about Anzu is that the remains were found scattered across a floodplain, indicating that it may have lived in a lowland floodplain environment. This is substantially different to what we currently know about the Asian oviraptorids which are known only from semi-arid environments. Oviraptor is known from a single partial skeleton, as well as a nest of about 15 eggs that have been referred to this species. It has two long, well-developed hind limbs, each had three clawed fingers that were used to hold, rip and tear their prey. The oviraptor had large eyes with bony rings and an unusual cranial crest along with a toothless beak. Its name is Latin for egg Caesar, referring to the fact that the first fossil specimen was discovered atop a pile of what was thought to be Protoceratops eggs. Rinchinia skeleton was more lightly built and less robust than that of Oviraptor, and while the crest of Oviraptor is indistinct because of poor fossil preservation, Rinchinia had a well-preserved, highly developed dome-like cask which incorporated many bones in the skull that are free of the crest in Oviraptor. Conchoraptor does not possess a head crest. It is speculated that it, and possibly other oviraptorids may have fed upon mollusks since their beaks would have been well suited to crushing shells. Sitipati is one of the best known oviraptorids, thanks to a number of well-preserved skeletons, including several specimens found in brooding positions atop nests of eggs. These nesting specimens have helped to solidify the link between non-avian dinosaurs and birds. The largest Sitipati were emu-sized animals and were the largest known oviraptorids until Gigantoraptor was described in 2007. Preservation of the pigments Boliverdin and Protoporphyrin in eggshells belonging to Heyuanya indicate that they were blue in color. The arrangement of the eggshells suggests a partially open nest arrangement for Heyuanya, and also indicates that it engaged in increased parental care. <laughs> 